Now, <coughs> what we learn from this in part, basically what we've been talking about, is that what you eat, what you drink, environmental toxins, all of these things can affect your gene expression. And, and the reason we're going over this again is so that when we get into the laws of health, you begin to understand why the laws of health, when properly applied, can be so effective in healing disease. Because actually what you're trying to do is you're trying to affect the, the, uh, the epigenetics of the person to affect the gene expression. And they know from exercise, within 20 minutes of you starting to exercise, you begin to be able to produce uh, a situation within your system that begins to turn cells on and off. So even with exercise, you're already to begin to affect your genes or the genetic expression. So the laws of health, you're going to notice, without you even getting into the details, themselves can actually turn off bad genes and activate good ones. Or not the genes themselves, but the expression thereof. Here's what Emma White, uh, White Law, PhD, says. What we inherit from our parents are chromosomes, and chromosomes are only 50% of DNA. Now, how many chromosomes? Anyone know how many we inherit from our parents? 46. How many? 46. 46, that's right. 23 from each parent, right? 23 from each, yeah. That's right. For, for a total of 46, right? What we inherit from our parents are chromosomes, and chromosomes are only 50% DNA. The other 50% is made up of protein molecules, and these proteins carry the epigenetic, epigenetic marks and information. So the proteins within the DNA is what carries it. Uh, here's what one I want to zero in on. Science has discovered that what we eat exerts the strongest effect on these epigenetic switches. So your diet, science has discovered, has the greatest single effect on your epigenome. So if I'm a medical missionary, right, and a person is sick, we got to look at all the laws of health because it's a system. But I know right from the very beginning that one of the, one of the major issues is going to be their diet. Now, epigenetics and natural compounds. Or there's some natural compounds that can also affect this. It says here, epigenetic regulation, which includes changes in DNA, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this is what, the yellow part is what I want to zero in on. Which dietary components can selectively activate or inactivate gene expression. Curcumin is one of the ones that they found that has an effect on switching on and switching off genes. Now, who, who's familiar with curcumin? Get it from turmeric. That's right. Turmeric. They found in the study, and I got this, most of this information from a government website from the, the uh, National Institutes of Health. So I'm not just making this stuff up. Uh, they talk about here how Curcumin, a component of the golden spice curcumin longa, a commonly known as turmeric, has recently been determined to induce epigenetic changes. Recently, natural compounds such as curcumin uh, and EGCG and resveratrol have been shown to alter epigenetic mechanisms. Now, in natural medicine, one of the things you hear herbalists or naturopaths or whatever talk about with curcumin, they would typically give it for inflammation. Curcumin has been shown to have inflammation throughout anywhere in the body. But when we get to the herbal part, we'll, we'll be looking at that. But this also, you understand, understanding, and here I just want to let you see on a different level. Even though you understand that it affects inflammation in the body, it also affects, affects rather, the epigenetics of the person you're dealing with. So it can actually turn on genes and turn off genes. And that may be the reason why you're getting the benefit of it that you're getting. This may lead to increased sensitivity of cancer cells to conventional agents, thus an inhibition, inhibition of tumor growth. Tumor has also been shown to help uh, slow down or stop tumor growth. Evidence in the past decade has provided important clues that natural compounds 
present in plants or in the diet directly influence epigenetic mechanism in humans? Did it say present in flesh? The test did. In plants. The original diet. Indeed, some dietary polyphenols may exert their chemopreventive effects in part by modulating various components of the epigenetic machinery in humans. In other words, we're just saying that the way some of these foods may work in helping to reduce cancer is by affecting switching on and switching off certain genes. That's essentially what they're saying. This is the uh, this is where I got it from, and I and that was just I just it's a long study. It's, I mean, you have to sit there, and it's very technical. I just try to take it and put it in like a, you know, basic uh, uh, language. But it's from the U.S. National Library of Medicine at the National Institutes of Health. And that's the, that's the article. Now look at this. This is what I mentioned to you earlier. A new study, this is some years ago, in the March issue of Cell Metabolism shows that when people exercise for something as little as a 20-minute workout, it can alter their DNA almost immediately. Really, it means that the more accurate way of saying it is it alters the expression of the DNA. Mm-hmm. And this is a study reported in Cell Metabolism. So think about that for a moment. If I go out and I begin to exercise for 20 minutes, right? Mm-hmm. Already, my, my, my DNA expression begins to alter for, in a positive fashion. So, now think about it. If you sit down and you say, okay, someone comes to you and you say, okay, and you start going through talking about the laws of health, right? And we haven't even talking about yet trusting the Creator, sunshine, exercise, water, air, rest, diet, and self-control, or temperance, right? But they all have a scientific benefit to the body. And so when you're working with someone, you are supposed to be a master at these laws of health. And once you master them, First from the scriptures, but then also from a scientific perspective. Because remember, as we said before, true science, right, is just, is just man's way of explaining God's laws. 